Hi, Manley McLaughlin here with the BC Construction Association. So I want to talk to you about a couple of things today. Uh, the first one uh, is a bit of a recap from the annual uh, Construction Association Summit that we hosted at the end of January in Vancouver. This year we asked the four regional associations that participate in this summit to bring forward their priority issues for the upcoming year. Uh, no surprises really in what was presented to the summit. Uh, four key areas were presented as priorities. Public sector procurement is probably the, the first and major one uh, on the list. This is an issue that BCCA and the regional associations have been dealing with now for a number of years. And so um, we continue to put this uh, at the top of our agenda. We continue our conversations with government. Uh, clearly, lots of uh, concern about um, the uh, construction uh, procurement processes that are intended to be used on the new schools that are uh, going to be built here in BC. Uh, the design build process is a, um, is a well accepted process. The concern is that design build is in fact being mandated or it's being reported that it's being mandated as the only process that can be used and we, we have and will engage the provincial government on that issue. Uh, the next um, priorities were around uh, availability of skills. Uh, this is a human resource issue that we've been talking about for years. Uh, that issue is now front and center as the activity levels pick up in northern British Columbia. Uh, it's become a focal point for us uh, and we will be working uh, with our regional associations and through our STEP program and with employers to address it, to assist them in addressing that issue. Skills training uh, is the second issue and so it's about the capacity of the issue, I'm sorry, the, of the industry to address this issue. Uh, do we have enough um, uh, dollars committed? Do we have the system prepared to train the kind of people uh, in the kinds of skills that we're going to require to address the, uh, the, first, or the second issue, which was skill shortage? So we will be working with CETO and uh, with the ITA and others uh, in that regard. The fourth issue was around international competition, and we've seen this now in British Columbia for uh, a number of years. Um, BC has got a... Um, uh, uh, is well positioned across the globe. And so as our um, investment in construction, uh, as our investment uh, in infrastructure, and as the investment increases in resource-based projects in the north, the international companies are going to be attracted to British Columbia and will do business here. So we need to prepare ourselves for just what does that mean. Uh, finally, um, to shift to yesterday's budget. This um, was, was recognized as being a difficult uh, budget to put together. We're in difficult economic times. Uh, one just has to read the newspaper or listen to the news to look at what's happening in Europe and recognize that anybody at the provincial level uh, striving to put together a, uh, a budget that uh, was similar to budgets we've seen in the past would be faced with a very difficult time. I think this government needs to be com commended on the work that they've done. Uh, it is a, uh, a budget that um, uh, in uh, Finance Minister Falcon's words, lays a firm foundation for the future, putting BC on the right path to eliminate deficits, protect public services, and build a more competitive economy. And that's, uh, that's key words for us. Uh, from the ICI construction sector perspective, there's a number of welcome elements to this budget. Uh, a commitment of continued funding of annual facilities grants for school maintenance. Uh, that's $110 million in 2012-2013. Um, the BC training tax credits are extended. Now those are credits that are uh, around uh, uh, to support uh, employers who engage apprentices and employers and, and, and apprentices who are involved in the system. Those will remain in place for another three years. Um, the um, taxpayer supported capital spending and this is where uh, uh, we look at uh, how much capital is going to be invested across the province. Uh, in the next three years, there's a commitment of $10.7 billion, which is a good, healthy number. This includes uh, new spending of $1.3 billion in new uh, in expanded facilities, $1.1 billion to maintain and upgrade schools and hospitals and other provincial infrastructure, and over $300 million to support innovation and technological transformation and ministry operations. Um, the Crown agencies are going to continue to invest. Hydro is probably uh, front and center in that. We know their, their capital budget will be extensive and we know that there are still some larger um, transportation uh, projects that will uh, bolster that, uh, that investment. Uh, the Portman Bridge, for instance, and Highway 1 project 
um, will uh, we'll keep that capital spending level up. We do need to note, though, that those are not uh, uh, don't have infinite terms; that they will come to a uh, an end uh, sooner rather than later. So, over the next couple of years, we'll probably see uh, a diminished budget in that area. So, um, all in all, with the um, with the, the investment in capital that I've just reported and the support that's been provided to the home building sector. Um, this is actually a very good budget for the construction industry and we'd like to commend the, uh, the provincial government and Finance Minister Falcon for the good work that they've done in that area. So that's all I got. Uh, thanks for uh, paying attention and uh, we look forward to our next uh, bulletin in uh, April. Thanks.